So the next example is uh, we're going to do an API example, another API example. This is going to make an external HTTP request to a different endpoint, and we're going to use that data to do something interesting. Okay. And so we looked at an example using JSON with Markdown. Uh, now we're going to look at an example using a CSV file. And the CSV file we're going to pull from the internet is on Yahoo's website. Uh, so as far as I know, Yahoo is like the last place you can get public financial data for free. Uh, I don't know if you're actually supposed to be able to, but you can. Uh, Google sort of gave up on this game a while ago. They used to have a, you can get stock prices and stuff, but they, I think they deprecated and killed that API off. Google Finance, so that's, uh, you can't do that anymore. But we can use Yahoo, which has this long ago uh, abandoned uh, API, which seems to work, okay? Um, so let me clear all this, and we'll close all these, and create a new folder in the day one, and we'll call this a csv-example. Create a new app YAML, which is just going to copy the other one. So I'm just going to copy it from here. Okay. So nothing new there. Um, and then we'll create a new file and we'll call it routes.grow. The package. We'll call it CSV example, all one word, all together. And what should I have in my routes go? Probably in uh, net HTTP. And uh, yep. And uh, then you're going to have your handler, so HTTP handle font. Yep. And then your pattern and your functions. Yeah, so let's think about what we're going to do here. The, the uh, outline says that uh, we want an application which can take in two stock ticker symbols and calculate the correlation between the returns over the last five years. And then we want to chart. We'll do the chart later. The, so calculating the correlation between the returns, the correlation is a function that takes uh, two arrays of numbers and gives you a single number at the end. It basically tells you uh, as one moves, the other moves likewise. And so correlation of one means they're perfectly correlated. The correlation of negative one means they're exactly opposite correlated. So if one goes up, the other goes down by the exact same amount and so on. Uh, correlation is a useful thing in, in uh, when you're doing financial stuff because it, it can uh, tell you, uh, for example, if you're trying to be have a diverse portfolio, uh, like I want stocks that are different, they behave differently, I can use correlation to help me make that kind of decision. Anyway, correlation is an easy function for us to calculate. We will add that function later. But, so, so that's like functionality, we're not at that level yet. We're at the level of, I'm thinking about what it should look like. And so I see it can take two stock trigger symbols, and I think, okay, so I have a page, right? And what should two stock ticker symbols? How do I get two stock ticker symbols form from the two user? Inputs. Exactly, form with two inputs. So I think form with, you know, S1 and S2, and there's two inputs and a submit button, right? And then. So that's one page, and the other page is like, you know, correlation, colon, uh, zero point black, or, or whatever it is, okay? Um, and so, two pages, okay? And this one is probably going to be S1 equal and S2 equal, right? That's probably what it's going to take. The, these inputs will go to that page. Now we could just use one page, we could use two pages. To make it easier, let's just do two pages. So we're gonna have two routes. One route for this form and one route for the value, for the result. Right? Everybody understand <laughs> that? So uh, it's been a long time since I've been in the staff, so why would S1 and S2 be different on the results page? It seems like correlation is one result that comes from both numbers. Uh, correlation is between two things. Right, so you have two things, you get one number. The That's right. Is so the symbols are representing the two things we're trying to find yeah. the correlation for. Yeah. So I'm like trying to find the correlation between Google okay. and Microsoft or something. Okay, got it. Um, 
Okay, so, so uh, we need a form with two inputs, and so I think in here we have, let's just do, uh, let's not do slash at all. Let's just have slash, uh, <coughs> we'll call the, uh, I don't know, slash inputs. Bernie should be one and Madoff should be the other. Okay, that works. And then we'll have another for slash Madoff. And of course, the results will be like everything always correlates with <laughs> higher profit. If everything is one, invest with us, one. Okay, so we're going to have those, those two endpoints. And Okay, so we're going to have our two endpoints here. Right. Um, to make this easy, let's just not use a template. We don't need one. Um, so what do I do with Bernie? <laughs> Terrible name for it. Yeah, insert jokes here. That's what's uh, No input. Um, so we've got uh, two variables coming in, so we've got to get those variables. So if a uh, request.method equals post, right? Yeah, so the intention is that this guy will post to this guy. So. Okay. Right. So the, the first thing here is we need to, uh, I think in the net we, could, we should parse our templates and then. Yeah, yeah, I was saying we can just skip the templates because uh, okay. we don't really need them. Uh, so I think we'll just do iowa.write string to the response and then the string. And then here we'll just, you know, do our standard. Um, But yeah, normally you'd use a template or something. Okay, so now we have our thing in here, and we're going to want a form. Uh, it'll be a get. We'll do a get so it's on the URL, so users can copy and paste. They share with their friends, you know. Um, and then action equals. What's the action? Did I spell that right? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, and so actually this is a good example because it tells you something important. Uh, which is don't ever invest me with the last name of Matt <laughs> off. Because you're gonna go off being mad. Uh, the, the URLs are completely up to us. They don't have to be rational, they could be ridiculous. As long as the user can click things and it works, that's probably good enough. But anyway, uh, there's this whole debate that goes on in, in a lot of sort of web circles about RESTful URLs, and web developers tend to spend a lot of time thinking about that and make a big deal out of it. The truth is users never look at their URLs. They don't care. And so we, we, we expend a tremendous amount of effort on something that doesn't even matter uh, in the end. Because how often do users go look at what's in the URL? They just never do that, right? Like, do I care what this is? In several browsers now. I just click it and say control C, you know, like, anyway. So if you spend a ton of time on that, that's kind of a waste of time. I'm not saying you should name your URLs very made off, but <laughs> I'm saying the users don't care. Um, okay, so we have, we're going to make our, our uh, symbol one. Uh, does everybody know what a stock ticker is? So yeah. I'll show you. It's just G-O-G. So if you do, if you invest in the stock market, you can go here and, and uh, do goo. And uh, see, that's the stock ticker. Just the G-O-O-G part. And these are general um, stock tickers that are available everywhere. Show me the 10 year on that. Yeah, if you'd invested in Google 10 years ago, you're in, in good shape. <laughs> uh, Classic moment, sure. Yeah, no joke. It's really junk recently, I wonder why. 
Floyd Jumps. Right. Well, like two weeks ago. He just reported really high profits. We want to see something like really fun. Apple, man. That's not 10 years. Well, you gotta get, well, you gotta get back to 97 for Apple. <laughs> Why isn't it showing the whole thing? Here it is. And then it was way down. They're trying to reduce it. They mentioned the iPhone. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so anyway, the AAPL is the stock ticker symbol, okay? And so, uh, you know, if you do an investment, you sort of learn some of the common ones, but you can search for them, and it would tell you. If I searched for Apple, it would tell me what it was. But I'm expecting AAPL, or MSFT, or GOOG, okay? T. Or T for uh, AT&T. AT &T. Yeah. What'd you say? Yeah. Is that Bank of America or something? Uh, I don't know. You're right, it's Boeing. Bank of America's BAC. Anyway. Uh, but we're, we're, so that's where the stock is. It's just a symbol. Boeing's uh, the as well, though. And it represents the company. Uh, it, it turns out that symbols are nowhere near, like, universally, there's no definition for them. It turns out to be a really hard problem, actually. But we don't care. We're just going to do popular companies that everybody knows, and those work fine. Um, okay, so symbol one, we'll have an input. Call it symbol one. It's not very creative. Um, and then we'll do the same for symbol two. Whoops. And I think that'll be our basic form. Okay. And so when we su oh I need the uh, submit button. When we submit this form, it will post to the other URL slash mail. But yeah, so we'll see on the end, question mark, symbol one equal, and question mark, symbol two equal, okay. Um, so let's see if we got that to work. So I'm gonna go to CSV example, um, go out, serve. You know, one thing I always was interested in doing was correlating uh, weather <laughs> so that, that's right. And so if I type G O O G and M S F T, we go to our other page, which isn't implemented yet, but that part's working. So we got the first page done. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. This is pretty straightforward. Right? We just wrote that. Yeah? No, we just stretch it. Okay, so what do we want to do in down here? Um, First. Yeah, let's get the variables. So I'm going to write uh, symbol, symbol, symbol one, symbol two. I'm going to equal rec dot form value one and rec dot form value two. If that's too confusing, some people find that confusing. Uh, you can break them into two separate lines. Okay, so we have our two symbols. Eventually, we're going to write to our response some data, okay? And so, let me just copy some of this. Okay, and I think what we want to do here is we'll have correlation is, you know, some value, okay? And so we haven't written that yet. Eventually we'll get there. Uh, but for, for now, what we'll do is we'll just have symbol one, um, and then symbol two. So we're just going to show the symbols, and eventually we'll fill in the correlation. Everybody following? So I should just see the symbols on here now. So that's working. This is the most boring page ever, but it, it works. Um, and if I change it up here, you know, to T, then it, it'll work. Everybody following? Yeah. Okay, so now the trick is we have to get, we have to calculate the correlation. Uh, but we need the data to calculate the correlation. So I think we're going to need at least three functions. 
We need one function to get the data, another function to calculate the correlation. Okay. I guess it's only two functions. Um, but one of them only twice, which is getting the data. Uh, okay, so let's stub those out. And what I mean by stubbing is uh, you're making just the definition without the implementation, right? So we're sort of starting on this side and not starting on actually building the function. We're just sort of thinking through, well, what would it look like if I already had made a function to do this? Um, because that helps us reason about what we want it to look like. Um, so what should get data look like? Um, if, if I was trying to get data for this chart, and I know that correlation needs essentially this line. It needs two of those lines, put them together to get one number, okay? It's the two lines, looks how they correlate, it gives you a single number at the end. Yeah, it's called the Yahoo for each symbol. Yeah, so what are the, the types for that going to be? So I think we're going to need a name of a function. Let's call it get data. What's it going to take in? Symbol. Symbol. Presumably everything else is defined in it, but yeah. you, could say, you could say how many, how, how long you want to correlate over. Maybe a time period. Let's just start with this though, and I think that we're going to need context. Exactly. Game is way ahead of the curve here. Maybe that's not surprising. Okay, so what's it going to return? It's going to return us well, bytes probably. Yeah. So I, I suspect data one here is going to be a slice of float 64, okay? And so, not just this though, that's what the data will be, it'll also return an error in case it's a bad symbol or something. But the data itself is gonna be a slice of float 64, okay? Now you might return a slice of something else that had like the date inside of it. Um, you know, like uh, January was this number, February was this number, and so on. Um, but we're just going to return this number. And we're going to uh, sort of, the way we're going to write this is such that we're going to get the same data for both of them. And so that way they do line up. Okay. So like right. I said, every position will be the same thing. That's right. We're getting those two lines, and they'll be uh, overlapped. And so we don't need the dates because God will be implicit in them. Which is returns. what getting closes? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's going to be a little trickier than that, but that is the basic, uh, uh, we're getting that number that's listed when I hover over the mouse here, okay? The price here, the closing price each day. The, the tricky thing is we actually don't want the price, we want the relativized price. Because actually, one of the funny things about these charts is almost all financial charts are drawn incorrectly because they show you the price, and the price is actually meaningless. The price of a stock is not significant. It's the relative change of the stock is what's significant. Because what I pay for it doesn't matter, right? I might buy $1,000 worth of some stock. That might be 10 shares, that might be 100 shares. Who cares? All I care about is that what's its value next year? If that $1,000 invested is now worth $2,000, that's great. I don't care how many shares it took to do that. And so anyway, we're actually gonna wanna convert this into a relative number. In other words, we're gonna say, Okay, start at 100 and figure out the relative change over time instead of the absolute change. And then we're going to compare the relative changes um, instead of the absolute change. Does that make sense? Or is that just like... No. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> okay. Well, we don't, so I, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't change this thing. Okay. It's just going to change slightly the way we get the data. That's all. Um, because if they had different prices, there would be skewing if you were trying to do the correlation. Yeah, yeah. In other words, if you had a really high price, you know, if I had a $100 stock versus a $10 stock, um, you know, the $100 stock changes to $110 and the $10 stock changes to 20 those are not the same different changes. You know, one changed like 10%, the other changed 100%. And so if I had $1,000 in the $10 stock, I made $2,000. If I had $1,000 in the $100 stock, I made uh, I made $100, right? I mean, the big difference in the relative. And so the correlation should reflect that, okay? It shouldn't reflect the absolute anyway. 
Uh, but that's a, a, a side issue. I, I think the important thing here is not so much do I understand how correlation works, it's how I structure what I'm doing, okay? And we'll see that. The point is, I'm, right now I'm thinking about types. Um, just the type, what the type of the data is. So that'll be our, our data one, and, the, and like I said, it's actually gonna return an error. So we'll just take this bit out. And then we'll have data two. So I think if there's an error, we'll just return that, the way we've been doing. And we'll do the same for the second one. And here's our last function. Um, we'll just call it C correlation between data one and data two, okay? And so correlation will take in two slices of quote 64s and return one number. Well, well I'll, I'll give you the definition for that. I have that in another thing. But this is the point that we just need to kind of Okay. So any questions so far? Everybody understand the basic flow here? Um, so down here. Do you actually use this stuff for your personal investing is this where this example came from? No, but I've done this uh, for other things. Well, I'll show you where the example came from. If it's still there. came from this. Okay? And so it, it uses something like correlation underneath to do what it is. So we're, we're it's kind of building what this is doing. Like I said, the data comes from the out here. Okay, so uh, we're going to format that correlation number. Like I said, it's a number between negative one and one, I think. Uh, so maybe we'll do um, percent point for half for correlation. And so it gives us four decimal places on the number. Okay, so now we have to define these functions, right? Because they're not defined, that's what it's complaining about. So let's add, we'll call it, uh, I don't know, data or stats. Stats sounds better. Stats.go. So we need our correlation. What was the type of the correlation function? Float 64. So it's going to return uh, float 64. But what did it take? It goes to the range of the stock symbol. No, that was get data. So this is already once we have the data. It took two lists of float, or two arrays of float 64. Exactly. Okay. So that's, that'll be our correlation. Two slices of float 64s in terms of float 64. Um, and then we'll have get data. That will take in. Take in a symbol? Yeah. Took in something before that, though. Uh, context? Yep, exactly. And what did it return? Following so far? So let's do correlation first because it's easier because I can copy and paste it. Uh, so at least I think I have correlation here somewhere. Oh, I guess I don't. Um, you can get it off Wikipedia. Though actually, maybe you, maybe this exists in a library, so let's do that. Look at that. Do those list them in any order? I don't know. It's a good question. Probably not. <laughs> uh,
click the first item, basically. Oh, right. Yeah, I, yeah, that's probably true. This doesn't look right. It opened a new tab. Um, go math stack. That sounded better. Small math. It does have docs. They're just not. Ready to know how to calculate correlation just off the top of their head? Well, that's what Don teaches here on campus. Oh. I have covariance, but I don't have correlation. I don't remember the difference. <laughs> There's some difference. Uh, what about just Wikipedia? Yeah, we can do that, but unfortunately, this is one of the areas where Wikipedia becomes really annoying. because they like give you the entire breakdown of what it means. And I'm like, I don't understand any of this. I just want, I just want some pseudocode, you know? Like, I don't care <laughs> about all this. It's all meaningless to me, uh, but they don't give you any pseudocode. Um, so, you know, sometimes what I'll do is like, uh, look it up in JavaScript or something, right? And, you know, copy code from, from this and convert it into, uh, Holy cow. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, and convert it into um, Go. Man, this is ugly, but okay. There should be Go. The first, the first library we looked at had Pearson correlation. Yeah, but it returned a slice of float 64s. That seems wrong, right? It's supposed to return one number. Um, this is this is what I'm looking at. See, it returns a slice of float 64. That can't be right, unless it's somewhere else in here. But you're saying there was another one on here somewhere? Well, I'm not sure which one you looked at first. They're all like the float 64. Are they? There is a relationship between the two. Um, so perhaps we should just change the definition of our problem and return the covariance. You guys buy that? <laughs> that's you, a, you've ever had access to the Google Doc. Okay. What now? You, you have had access to the Google Doc. Yeah. It's your power. Yeah. I totally meant covariance. That's what I meant. <laughs> I forget the relationship, but there is one. Okay, so I've, I've got the covariance here. Uh, this vector, it is just a slice of float 64. Okay. So we don't. That's good. Okay. So if they're not the same length, this just panics. Um, and then it does this complicated formula and just returns the result at the end. Um, I think it's funny when we saw the JavaScript how much longer that was. I don't know why it was so much code when this is so little, but anyway. Uh, but the, the point is we don't have to, uh, normally you don't have to invent these functions, and we could have found correlation eventually. Uh, you can usually find somebody who's found them for you. Uh, and so, let's check that out. Let's just uh, ignore the definition here. And just, we're just using, okay, so I'm gonna change the, this to covariance uh, and change it here to covariance. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to get a number from our slice of data, and so now we need to return slice of data. Okay. Because the the point here wasn't so much to see the covariance; it was to see the getting data. Okay. And doing something with data that's useful. Um, all right. So, how do we do that? Um. So if we go to, this is how I did this. And there, there's something useful about doing this this way. Uh, 
because this is often what we end up having to do. So I went to this website and I clicked on a symbol like Microsoft. Okay? And then I clicked on historical prices. Now we've done this before. And I went down here to download. Okay? And I looked and saw the parameters on their URL and guessed at what they meant. So if we go to our get data. So this is what we're going to do. <laughs> Such a hack. This is what you do. And then you say, uh, <laughs> OK, so question mark s equal ms, that's probably the symbol, right? That's got to be the symbol. So let's, let's do that. So we'll have a percent s for that. Uh, and then we had and d equals 6. 6, 27, 2015. Starting date today. The most recent data they'll give you is June 27. That can't be right. Could be day. Could be a month. Yeah, that's not the date. Was it 6? Oh, it starts at zero. That's what it is. It starts at zero. So six means July. But, uh, but the 27 is 27. Although I guess I just barely closed today. So. See, this is what happens when they don't give you a real API. You just start guessing, and you'll figure it out eventually. But then you can't really rely on it because it may just break at some point. Um, I think that the G means day because you could get monthly. But I'm not sure about that. The 2015 must be the year. Okay. Uh, so we just need to keep adding these. Well, 2015 is the final year. A, B, C, C is the So this must be the the when it starts. starts. Yeah. Okay. I think it's an off page because if you have a newer symbol, it's like you're only going to add it at a certain point. That's an issue, yes, it is. Uh, and correlation is actually only meaningful for longer periods of time. If you don't have enough data, it becomes a meaningless statistic. Okay. I don't know what the ignore is for. We're just going to have it because they have it. Um, so we need to pass in the symbol. That will be the symbol we have up there. Okay. Um, so let's, uh, let's see if this works. So okay. maybe you can have Yahoo here. They're saying ignore CSV and uh, you know, like make it a, some other file, but upload a script. <laughs> and then it doesn't ignore, ignore it. I don't know. It might be related to the name up there or something. Um, but let's okay. Let's make a fetch. So how do we do a fetch? Client. That's right. URL fetch dot client. Give it the context that gives us our client. Give returns and errors. Okay, so now we have a client. No, it doesn't return an error. I'm not very good at guessing these things. Um, so how do we we do client.get, right? And give it the URL, which we just built. And that gives, what does that give us? Result in an error. Result. Make it result, not RES. That confuses me. It's not like response, result. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, right. This I sometimes good. actually type reslut on my funny typos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what? So now we have our results. We need to defer result.body.close. And then we're eventually going to build. Uh, slice of float 64, right? And so we want to return that eventually. But at this point, we have really no idea what we're doing. So let's look at what the data is. Um, so we give it the context result. So we need to pull on the body. So I'm going to use IOD tilde read all. 
Okay? And that's going to read the whole body into a slice of bytes. And that way we can look at them. Because um, right now we don't know what it is. So I'm going to convert that into a string so that it prints nice. Otherwise we would see square bracket is a bunch of numbers. But I want to see the actual text. Okay, so let's, let's run that. So cool, it's a CSV file. And you see this is the uh, year, month, day, and then these are the various things. I think if we go to the top, we'll see, see the headers or not. Uh, it's because I pulled in too much data. So let's, uh, let's minimize the amount of data here. Let's not go back to 1986 for every day. That's, that's too much information. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see if my theory is right about M here. So I thought the D meant day, so maybe M means month. Why not? But we don't want year, we want monthly returns. Yeah, this is monthly. Uh, two, one, three, this is better. That's good. Uh, yeah, it's weird. Here we the go. Month, the month is... Date, open, high, low, close. So I think what we want is either close or adjusted close. Mm -hmm. Huh? Haven't we seen this before? Yes, this, we were using this data before. Oh, it's the same data? Right, except now, we're fetching it from the internet. We're scraping it off of Yahoo's website rather than manually clicking download. Right. Because we're going to build a nice chart or whatever. Now, you couldn't really use this site for real because Google, uh, Yahoo would shut you down. Right? You're like, you're not allowed to use our data. Uh, but, uh, anyway. So, so if you made too many requests, they'd be like, too many requests coming from that IP? Something like that, probably. How do you spoof your IP? Um, you, you run dozens of machines, and you know, you all fetch might do it for you. Uh, I don't know. From like P random zero to <laughs> No, what you, do, what you do is instead of using URL fetch, you make the clients, uh, your, your users, do it. Oh, that's not going to work, though. Because uh, they will be denied based on their domain. I was going to say you could make them do AJAX calls, and then each of your users is doing the data fetching for you, but we can't do that. Um, uh, you just don't. This is, this is you can you pay you pay money to Nasdaq or whoever and buy the data like you're supposed to, and pay a portion for it. Um, okay, so we need the close here, uh, which is the so the first column is date, the second column is open, third is high, fourth is low, and the fifth is close. So we want the fifth column. Everybody buy that? We need the fifth column and the date. Yeah. The date. So. What do you need the date for? Um, as long as the length of the return is the same, you've got the same data. Okay. So let's do that. Wait, this is six? Let's go to the first. And then that's already correct in the monthly. It's returning the first one every month. Yeah, but it, sometimes it's returning the second. It looked like or the third. Well, that's because it's first. That's the first business day. Good point. That's a good point. Or first stock day. Um, you're right. So it was actually working. Uh, but let's not get that much data. Let's just get 2005. So 10 years of data. Uh, I think the minimum you can use three, and that's pretty sketchy. Five would be okay. Five years, so maybe we'll just do five. Um, as far as amount of data, it's statistically relevant or whatever. Uh, okay, so now we have the dates sort of lined up. Uh, I mean, but you're right, it would work the other way. Um, so we get a symbol. And now what we do is, is since we have our data, uh, we use CSV. Remember the CSV package? Remember how that worked? There's a CSV parse, isn't there? Yeah. There's a csv.readall that we can use. I think it takes a reader to it. Um, maybe it's not that. Oh, right. You say new reader, then readall. So it's new reader. Um, 
Um, so we'll say reader, new reader, result.body. And then we say reader.readall. The reason why I'm going to use read all here is because we actually do need the whole data set. So there's no benefit to doing it iteratively. Um, and this is easier. So read all uh, returns the records and an error. So records and then error not equal nil. We'll return that. Um, what are the records that in one clip of the format? They're a, a slice of strings. Okay. So it's all the data in the CSV, each comma delimited in. Okay, so now we have our records. And I think what we want to do is uh, loop over the, all of the records and get the slice of da the data. Right? We want to fill that out. So let's get rid of this. So let me add a comment here. Um, parse the CSV file. Convert the, the rows to um, to floats. Okay. So I'm going to just hard code here const uh, and the date is a zero, or let's call it a date column. And the uh, close column was the fifth one. Is that right? So four, because it starts at zero. Uh, and then we're going to loop over records and. Uh, So if I is zero, we'll skip it, because that's the first row, which is the headers. Or if uh, length of row is less than five, in case you have like a blank row or something, we'll skip that too. Okay. Otherwise, we have a row, and so we want to uh, append that to our data. Um, remember, how do we parse a float 64? So I have string, how do I turn it into a, a float 64? Remember how to do that? It's uh, strconf.parse float 64. You give it the string, which is row at uh, close column. And uh, this is the base. And the last thing is the bits, which is 64. So that returns us the value. And I'm just going to ignore the error. Oh, it's just parse flow. Um, and it apparently doesn't take a, right, it doesn't take a base. It's the int that took the base. Right, because it would be kind of meaningless to have a base for a floating point number. You can't have like hexadecimal dot hexadecimal. That'd be weird. Um, okay, so. We're going to uh, convert the results, so we're going to get the data. So I think this will actually have data in it now. So if we want to see that, let's, uh, let's see if we can print that out and see what we get. Um, okay, so I'm going to print out the data. Let me clear this so it's up here. Damn. Yeah, we have an issue. So it does appear to have, that's cool that it prints out the log here. Uh, it does appear to have uh, given us data, but the lengths of the two arrays are different. Um, the vector lengths must be the same size. So the, the two slices of data were different. Um, so vectors. Let's, let's do the a different symbol. Yeah, let's do. So that didn't work either. Let's do Google to itself. There we go. That's probably out of date. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so we have. 
So I think there's an issue, right, with the data. So let's look at that, because it should work for other symbols. So um, data two here. Okay. You have to log again. Uh, your variable is correct. You have data two. Thank you. Thank you. That would have been very confusing. Why don't you log exactly the same. Two? Um, sorry, what? Why don't you log the links on two? Yeah, that's a good idea. Seventeen. Sixty-one. It's way different, right? Well, do you want to No, I don't want to do the five. Really, let's start the end date. Okay. Let's try a different symbol. There we go. Something screwing with Google. We can investigate further. Try to figure out what's wrong there. I think Google doesn't want to complain. Did Google change their stock symbol, maybe? I don't know. Um, Google's IPO. They haven't been IPO'd that long. That could be it, yeah. Five days. No, I can't be. They did split. Maybe that's the different share. Yeah, we could try to figure it out, but let's just use these two Apple and Microsoft. Um, okay, so now we have the two returns and we get a number. This number is probably wildly off base, and I think the reason it's off base is because we didn't relativize the numbers. So let me copy that function too. This actually is really. Well, what, what's the covariance between the two identical? Um, that's a good question. List of numbers. Because that Google to Google has nothing to do with uh, relativizing the same. Um, yeah, see, it's just this simple. <laughs> uh, there is something in here that tells you that. This is why you use, tend to use correlation, because it has an easier, uh, the numbers are easier to work with. And it, it's like the covariance uh, over the square root or something to fix it, but um, I forget. Anyway, it means something. But we need to relativize the numbers. So right now it's like 100, 111, 100, we need to change it to just be like the percentage change month to month. Well, um, but isn't something fishy already because covariance between Google and Google should be something other than maybe three to four? Um, I don't know. So, <laughs> like I said, I, I know the correlation, but I don't know what the covariance numbers are like just off the top of my head, but they are. Um, so, so what this does is it creates a new a new uh, slice, uh, it's one smaller, and then it calculates the percent change between each, and then it turns back. Um, the percent change is, uh, you take the current value minus the previous divided by the previous, gives you the percent change. Um, so. Okay. So a slice ha uh, has an underlying array. Oh yeah, that's right. And uh, it's a segment of that underlying array. Okay. And so the capacity is talking about the part after the length, right? It's so the that's the underlying array. Capacity. Yeah. Exactly. And length is how many we're going to put in there, but when you just have length, it's both the same. Uh, right. It'll create one with length and capacity set to that. Okay. Um, yeah, we only use the capacity for uh, performance reasons to try and pre-size, so when we do append a lot. Uh, it's not pre-created. Exactly. Right. If, if we know ahead of time how long it's probably going to be, that's usually a good strategy. In this case, we're not using append at all, so we don't have to do that. Some of this is, uh, some of the spaghetti sticking to the wall. 
<laughs> okay, so let's uh, let's relativize our data here. I feel like at the end of this training, I'll be ready for this training. <laughs> Go back and start at day zero. So I'm just going to return relativized data. Maybe this will fix our problem. Um, so let me clear this out. So now, now the numbers are, are, you see these very small changes. Um, actually, some of these are pretty big. Uh, but can we understand what we just did? It doesn't matter what the number is. It's not what's significant here. What's significant is that we got the data from Yahoo, turned it into a slice of float 64, and ran a calculation on it. Okay? Whatever that calculation is, even if the number's wrong, it's not the important part. The important part is that we know how to do this part, okay? Mm -hmm. The fetching and the conversion here. Does everybody understand the basic process we did? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and, it, and, and this is the basic process is, I know I can get data from this site. I gotta figure out how I can get it in my script. All right, so we got 20 minutes left. Can you show us how to scrape the website? Special Pure hack style. Yeah, I want to take yeah. data from these people. Started this hero out. Recursively work through every link on the page and suck all that data out. Yeah, not not in 20 minutes. Uh, <laughs> though I could tell you how you would do it. Um, Close the entire URL fetch client thing and keep a list of all the.